I'm standing here in the middle of the South Pennine Moors in West Yorkshire and the reason why we've come to this place is because it's one of only a handful of breeding sites for a very special rare little bird called the Twight, a tiny little finch that breeds in the South Pennines and we know it locally as the Pennine Finch. Twite like to nest on the moorland edge and they build their nests amongst tall vegetation and an ideal habitat is things like these bracken beds behind me. They build a nest in the bracken litter and uh, when they've built the nest they line it with sheep's wool so it looks like a little kinder egg and they lay five or six eggs and the female does all the incubation and uh, during that time the male will sometimes go off and uh, bring food back for her and uh, but when the chicks hatch the male will do most of the feeding whilst the female looks after the babies. Now twite are one of only two species of British songbird that feed entirely on seeds. Most finches, like green finches and chaffinches, when they're feeding their youngsters they feed them on caterpillars, but twite and linnet, they don't, they feed entirely on seeds. So what they need is a, a super super supply of seeds very very close to the nesting site and the seeds that they like grow in the hay meadows so they're absolutely dependent on these hay meadows. If the hay meadows go, the twite go. But it's not just any old seed, they're very very choosy about the kind of seeds that they feed on. And seeds aren't just available at any time of year, they come into season just like apples do and, uh, and then uh, disappear. So what they do is they move from one species to the next as the year progresses. And they start off in spring feeding on dandelions. Dandelions are the things that they like to eat and it's just before the dandelion clocks open. They like to feed on the little ripening seeds in the head of the dandelion clocks. And then the most important food plant for them is sorrel. It's usually common sorrel but they will also feed on sheep sorrel which is this lovely red flower that uh, makes the, uh, the hay meadows red in this part of the Pennines. And that, the reason why that's most important is because that's the species that they feed their chicks on. That's the, spe the seed that's ready uh, during late June and July when they're feeding their chicks. And then when the sorrel seeds have all disappeared then they move on to plants like autumn hawkbit and uh, common cats here which look very much like dandelions and they feed on the uh, developing seeds of those. And they'll also feed on thistles at this time of year but thistles are common they can get those anywhere. Just in this tiny little patch of grassland here on the moorland edge are two of the Twite's favourite food plants. Uh, the most important food plant is this species which is the common sorrel what most of the twite chicks will have been fed on there's not many seeds left on this particular seed head because it's way past the seeding date but uh, and in fact twite have probably been feeding on this very uh, uh, flower head here but the leaves are distinctive because they have these little wings at the back that uh, uh, part the stem there like a little sort of arrowhead and uh, the leaves also taste of vinegar they're very very sour which is how it gets its name sourl. Now the other plant that's growing here is autumn hawkbit which is very very like a dandelion it's very closely related to dandelion but it can be distinguished because it's got solid stems and usually has more than one flower head on a uh, on a stalk and its leaves are much more like a, a skeleton dandelion as well they're much much thinner and more spindly but like dandelions it also produces a dandelion clock and here's one of these so um, uh, not so easy to blow uh, uh, the seeds off but these are really rich very nutritious seeds for a, a, a twite eating one of these is like a roast beef dinner for a twite and this is just what they feed on in the autumn when the sorrel have finished setting seed the twite is a finch and like all finches it has a stubby little seed eating bill in fact it's even more stubby than most other finches and uh, it's smaller than a sparrow noticeably smaller than a sparrow and much darker too it's such a dark brown it almost appears black twites whether they're males females or youngsters have a lovely warm mustard colored face just around their actual face not on the whole head just on their face is mustard colored and uh, they have a little paler white panel in the wing and on the edge of the tail that you can sometimes see when they fly but the most distinguishing feature is shown only by the males and they have a bubblegum pink rump about the size of a 50 pence piece uh, that you would only usually see 
when it actually flies. But twice are very similar to a number of other birds uh, that you could get in the uplands as well. The species with which it's most often confused is the linnet, which is a very close cousin, about the same size, slightly shorter tailed, but it has paler plumage, paler feathers uh, than a twite. It never looks blackish. And also, linnets usually have a little pale spot in their cheek uh, just below their eye, and they never show that gingery colour, uh, that you know, the mustard colour around. Around the uh, uh, the beak. Most bird watchers separate linnets and twite because of their call, because twite call their name. They have a little buzzing sort of call that is absolutely, once you've heard that, no other bird makes a song like that. Uh, the other bird which regularly gets mistaken for twite is the meadow pipit, which is the commonest little brown bird that you would get in a moorland habitat like this. But a meadow pipit is an insect eater and it has a long, thin, pointed beak just for eating insects. Nothing like the twite's beak. And also, the meadow pipit calls all the time. When it takes flight, it goes seep, seep, seep. And that is, you know, again, once you've heard that seep, seep, seep call, it's nothing like the call of a twite. Very, very different. Um, the reed bunting also occurs in this kind of uh, uh, place. Now, male reed buntings are really, really easy to identify with a black head and a white moustache. They're actually bigger than sparrows as well, so much bigger than a twite. But the females and the youngsters are, are much more similar, little brown stripy things. But they've got really stripy faces, which twite don't have. Uh, they've got a pale eyebrow and a stripe through their eye and a stripe with a moustache and a stripe below that. So it's the stripy face of a breed bunting that would identify that. And the other species which sometimes get mistaken for is the dunnock. Now, dunnocks don't usually occur on moorland, but they do wherever there are bushes and trees, you will often get dunnocks. So in gardens on the moorland edges or near, near woodlands in moors. And dunnocks are essentially grey and brown. And um, they too, like meadow pipits, are insect eaters. So have an insect eating bill. They've got a little thin pointed bill, nothing like the stubby little seed eating bill of the twite. And they just shuffle around on the ground, usually in bare ground of flower beds or lawns and things like like that, but you would never really get them out in the open moorland like this. I've said that twite nest here in the South Pennine Moors, uh, but they don't spend all year here. In winter, they go to the seaside. So during September and October, they will gather into flocks, often with other species like linnets, and fly all the way down and uh, winter on salt marshes between, say, uh, Lincolnshire and Essex, somewhere in that coast where they'll feed on salt marsh plants. And then, when the winter's over, usually in about March, they will fly all the way back to the hills to nest. So if you think you've seen a twite during the winter in the hills, you probably haven't. The thing that makes this area so special for twite is actually the hay meadows behind me. This is where the twite get all their food from. But not all hay meadows have survived in this area. Many of them have lost the special plants that uh, the, the twite need. So we've been working with farmers to try and put those meadows back, to try and put the special plants back into the meadows to help twite. And it isn't just twite that benefits. Birds like skylarks love to nest in those meadows. And uh, uh, lapwings will nest in the meadows and curlews as well. And not just birds. Meadow brown butterflies love these trees traditional meadows and even the rare bilberry bumblebee goes into those meadows to find um, uh, nectar um, in, in the height of the summer. So these meadows really do benefit a whole wealth of wildlife, not just twite. So if you're in this area during the summer, do look out for twite.